Viime keväänä Salatut elämän sarjan tähdet pääsivät kohtaamaan kauniit ja rohkeat sarjan tähtiä ja tuo tapaaminen oli niin suuri menestys, että nyt päätettiin toteuttaa samankaltainen. Tällä kertaa salkkarit tähdet pääsevät kohtaamaan supersuosiun MD-sarjan tähtiä. Minkälaisilla kysymyksillä olette nyt sitten valmistautunut ottamaan selvää, että miten näyttelijät siellä tekee työtä? No. Saas nähdä, sitä lähdetään selvittämään, josta minua kiinnostaa hirveästi se, että et missä he kuvaa, miten he menee sinne kuvauspaikoille, kuinka monta kertaa viikossa, koska niillä on ihan valtava cast siellä, että niinku, miten se ollaan niinku orkesteroitu. Jump in. I mean, you guys yeah, sure. uh, are working in in uh, a local really big. Uh, do you do you call it a soap series or is it is it a drama series? What do you call them, Adele? A soap opera. Yeah, soap opera. Okay, fantastic. And you guys have had a run for over 50 years now, right? 50 years next year, I believe. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. You've done. Um, Emmerdale has done over or almost 10,000 episodes. How does it make you feel, how does it make you guys feel to be part of something that big? Well, um, you go, you go first, Chris. <laughs> well, I mean, I've, I've been here, obviously not for 50 years, but um, yeah, you do see, I've noticed the episodes ticking up towards 10,000. And it, it, it's a, it, it's a lot of episodes, isn't it? It's a, Just a monumental amount. Um, so yeah, when you put it in like that, I mean, each episode seems quite small, but it, it's kind of like every day, you know, it's um, we're all playing big stories generally. Although we haven't been, we haven't had any drama on set this morning, have we, Charlotte? It's been, it's been quite nice and relaxed. Yeah, it has been. It has been. I think, I think, I just feel incredibly lucky to be an actor who has been, you know, I've been in the show nearly well, 20 years. So the fact that I've been working an actor for 20 years every day, more or less, I feel so privileged. So when you're in a soap opera, that is a huge benefit as an actor. Sometimes you don't work for maybe a year, two years or whatever. So to be able to do the thing that you do every day or every week is, is you know, it's so I feel very privileged. What's your background? Like, how did you end up? I know that you guys, you have done other series as well. How did you end up uh, as being an actor? Ooh, I have a question before that. I want to okay. ask. Okay, so before we hear how you ended up being an actress, by actor and actress, did you have plans that I want to be a firefighter, or I want to be a police officer or a nurse or a doctor, or was this the thing you knew that you were going to be doing? Chris, if you want to go first. Yeah, um, no, I had no idea that I was going to be an actor and I fell into it completely by chance. Um, I was just a young kid at 13 and I got forced into doing a fashion show for my dad and my family because <laughs> my auntie was a hairdresser and they didn't have enough kids for the kids section. So I got roped into that and I just started acting. And I was very fortunate to get a job on a children's program, very young. And then I stopped for a while and went back to school and college. Um, and then I've just kind of, every time I've left to do something else, somebody's offered me a job. So I've been really lucky that it's always pulled me back and I've always really enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, I, had, I, also, I wanted to be an airline pilot when I was a kid, but um, I'm colorblind, so I couldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How about you, Charlotte? Yeah, I always wanted to be um, an actor because I was never hugely sort of academic at school. So I kind of, and all my family are into it as well. So, um, you know, not necessarily actors, but they're in, in television. My dad was a director and a producer and my brother in da da da. So, um, so it was kind of natural that I went into it really, I suppose. But I just never thought, I did give it up for a while actually um, and I went into casting for about two and a half years but then I've, I went back into it so um, so yeah okay, but so you ask now every, everyone seems to want to be you know on telly or you know all my kids you know the reality tv is that yeah. you know people don't want to be sort of joiners or you know engineers everybody wants to be sort of famous don't they at school at the moment yeah. and I'm sure that's something to do with the reality tv and TikTok and, and all yeah. of that. So um, 
I think that everybody's a bit of, of their own like superstars. It doesn't make a difference if you're a politician or, or what so, not so, or, or an airline a pilot. I mean, you, airlines also have their TikToks and they need to be really famous. So, so everybody's yeah. uh, jumping in front of the camera. Uh, but, but yes, then, then to the next question, I thought that was really interesting that how did you guys end up uh, choose, like doing the first acting job, if I could say this? Chris had, uh, he was forced into modeling and then he just was forced into acting, I suppose. <laughs> uh, but, but how about you, Charlotte? Did you go to, for castings or? Sorry. Okay, okay. Um, yes, that's you. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I kind of went to university and then I was in a play where I got an agent and then I just sort of was went out there, you know, auditioning and, um, and I did it kind of the sort of usual way, I suppose. Um, but, you know, it's really hard out there. I had loads and loads of years of just not working or just doing bits and bobs and gardening and waitressing and doing all those sort of things that you think, oh, God. So um, so it is, like I said to you, it's just nice to be working. How about you, Chris? What was the first casting? Um, yeah, my first casting... Um, I remember my first casting was a casting for Coronation Street, actually. Um, and I wasn't I wasn't right for that. And then but the casting director was the same person that was doing the kids' TV show that I just mentioned earlier. It was called Children's Ward. And I was um, playing a character called JJ and I had two broken arms. So I walked around in slings <laughs> for the whole series. Um, so yeah, that was that was where I started when I was 13, which seems a very, very long time ago now. It's interesting to hear the, the stories that you have because I lived almost four years in London and I studied at trauma school and everyone was kind of like telling us these magical stories about how they became an actor and all that and you need to go to drama school and you need to do this and you need to do that. But there's also the stories that you, like, like you have, Chris, uh, that you just kind of like ended up being an actor. Forced into acting. I did. I really, <laughs> I did. I really did stumble into it. But I, 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 and I, you know, I didn't know what I wanted to do. And then, you know, I was so, I was so young. And then I just really enjoyed it. And I think when you're a child actor as well, you can, you ask people questions and you absorb everything that's going on. So you've got the lighting people, the sound people, and you go, excuse me, why do you do that? And how does that work? So you, you really start to understand the whole set and what everyone's doing. Whereas when you're a bit older, you're a bit more reserved, aren't you? Because you don't want to seem like you don't know what someone's doing. <laughs> but wouldn't it be so important to keep that inner child and keep asking those questions? I, I think that's something that it's so easy to lose in a sense. But if you manage somehow to maintain that, it, it just stays like really fresh and interesting. I think it's about being comfortable on set as well, because it's, you know, it's a it's an odd environment that we work in, surrounded by lots of people doing lots of different jobs and everything has to be right at that moment in time to, to get it to get the scene shot. So it's um, I mean, I can imagine it's, it's I was a kid and I never really thought about it, but going on as an adult, it's like when you change your job now, it's quite daunting to, you know, stepping back on stage would terrify me now, I think. <laughs> Uh, Charlotte, may I ask you, I mean, this is the thing that usually people who are looking at stars as you guys are at this moment and then they hear, you know, or they can e read interviews about the studies and castings, but I mean, the casting process can be quite hard sometimes. And as, as you mentioned, it, that, that you need to work other jobs and you need to keep going at it. Do you have some good advice for that? Like when you're uh, uh, doing it, how do you, how do you know that you should keep pursuing it or how do you know when to quit it's a big question <laughs> it is a big question really I suppose it's how much you uh, it all depends on your circumstance as well I suppose you know ultimately if, if you have a family and you can't afford to to provide for them because you're not getting the jobs then sometimes the decision is made for you isn't it mm. um you know so so yeah, but of course you know if, if it's your absolute love and you know, you have to persist, don't you? But as long as it's not making you unhappy, um, I think you just have to try your best. And I think like what you were saying about being at drama school and everything, I think that to a certain extent, yeah, you have to learn the craft and, and you know, learn about Shakespeare and learn about this and that. And But I also think a lot of it is to do with luck. I really do. You know, 
I've worked, like I said, I worked in casting for two and a half years. I saw the casting process. And so often you'd get down to the last, actors would be down to the last three. And any one of those actors could have got and done that part and it would have changed their life. It just so happened that maybe that person had the right color hair or the right look. So it, that's just luck, isn't it? It's not necessarily about talent. So, you know, um, it's a really hard profession to go into because you've got to have a really thick skin. And my kids, I mean, I would, I don't know whether it, my kids won't go into it, but you know, it would be really hard if one of them wanted to, because I, I think I'm, I'm pretty, you know, it's just really hard. Yeah. I, I think that's probably the balance is that you do your best and then there's definitely uh, the amount of luck in everything you do yeah. and then you just need to be also pretty you know uh not too hard on yourself in that sense yeah exactly that, uh, if it yeah. you know it works out it doesn't but if not then you can do something else uh and perhaps become a pilot if you know how to see the right colors so <laughs> that's <laughs> always fantastic. Um, um what's the typical like typical day at work uh, when, when you go to the studio, what happens? Can you walk us through? Like, where is your locations and uh, how do you commute there? And like, we tried to find out something, but we didn't find any any information about how, how, how is Emmerdale running? We were Googling and apparently is your set somewhere really, really far away and our own little town or, or was it just false information on, on, on the internet? No, we have two, well, we have two locations. We have a, a studio um, okay. where all the interiors are filmed. And then we obviously have the exterior of the village, which is in Harewood, which is about 20 minutes from the studio. So, um, and, then, and then we also have other locations depending on what the storyline is. So um, a lot of the regulars obviously get themselves to set, but Chris has probably a different start to the day than I do because I go into makeup for a good hour, which I need. <laughs> um, but with COVID, obviously, that's made our life here very different. You know, we 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 are a big family here, and and that's part of the the joy of the job. And and with COVID, it's we've all been separated and we're all in individual dressing rooms and we can't have lunch together and we can't have the banter that we did because of the rules, obviously. Um, so it's quite different, hasn't it? It's been really different, hasn't it, Chris? Don't you think? It has been different. And just going back to me being colorblind and trying to do my makeup and to match my concealers has not been easy. <laughs> yeah, so, so my day starts with now with me panicking about getting my makeup color right before I go on set. Um, but yeah, I, you know, we work, I was just saying about a typical day. I mean, I've, today's an easy day. I've only got a couple of scenes today, but it can be intense and you can be crossing between the studio and then going out to the village um, for a few scenes and sometimes even coming back to the studio although it's it's not quite as chaotic as it used to be because we have so many COVID restrictions that we um, the things have had to slow down a bit haven't they to accommodate but it's, in, it's a more unusual working environment now as Charlotte said because you just don't see people as much you don't see other cast members you only see the people that you're in the scene with at the moment and um, we really want to get back to that that feeling where you can have a chat with people and catch up because you feel like you don't know what's going on in people's lives. You mentioned banter, and uh, before COVID and all that, um, do you guys have a lot of banter around the set? And do you do you guys do jokes and and have fun also while you're working hard? Oh my God, yes, absolutely. But with the mask on, you can't have any banter. Oh yeah. You know, you 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 realize how much banter is all about asides and this and that you can't do that with a mask on so yeah, so true. yeah we miss that we've really missed that um but but those long sort of days marriages deaths you know funerals where everyone's together in the old days um used to be a lot of it's a lot of fun and it will change again of course but um yeah banter is a big part of the day i think that's the you need it to be fun <laughs> yeah it is yeah. But uh, so you guys, you're a cast of 80 different characters about, oh right? Oh God, I don't, know, I don't know whether it's that many, 65, I thought, maybe. I don't know. Well, at least God. double the amount of, because I think we're about 30. 
So, yeah, so, right. so, do you know? Uh, because I feel that there can sometimes come a character to meet us uh, in the hall, and we're like, "Wait, who's that? I've never acted with this person." And then you, you, your, if your stories don't like intertwine, you maybe don't know. Do you feel that is it like a mix and mingle party, or or are there some characters that are totally new with you guys? How how does that work? Do you uh, like these times have been different in a sense, but. Do you meet them in the hallways? Do you feel that you know the other characters that are in the series? There are some characters, especially with COVID, that I've never met. No, yeah, definitely. It, it's definitely harder because they've had to keep us all so separate. But in the past, there are also stories that you were never involved in. So yeah, mm. you might not ever work with that person. Um, you might be in the same scene in the wall pack, but you won't be talking to them. But yeah, it's it's a really different place to work at the moment. Yeah, Definitely. I've been in. I was there. I've been in in the building, and you 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 pick up your scripts and you you see who the actor's name is, and then you're doing your scene with them, and you're like, oh, so how long have you been here? And I've had, oh, I've been here twelve months now. <laughs> <It's something laughs> I've worked mm. for a year, and I've never seen them or done a scene with them. Yeah, I I, I don't I I haven't I I've gotten up to six months, I think, not twelve months. So, but I I guess that that tells the story about that you have a, a bit of a bigger production than we do so it's a good good measure um i think uh, you usually have some good questions about like acting tricks uh yeah. do you have how do you learn your lines and stuff like that that's one of the most questions like the, the biggest or the, one of the most usual questions we get from fans do you have any tricks how you do that or is it just something that uh of course it gets easier down the line but do you have any special tricks how you learn your lines I need quiet, really. <laughs> quiet, no? Yeah. Yeah. So I can't do it around my kids. I need quiet. It's a muscle in your in your brain that is exercise. And when you exercise it and you 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 know a lot and you've got a lot of lines, you get quicker and quicker. And then I can I used to then go on holiday for maybe a couple of weeks and you notice the muscle goes a bit. So it is a kind of muscle that you are exercising, as it were. Um so that makes it easier but I don't I don't know yeah people ask me all the time how do you learn all that I don't know I just do it it's just I don't know it's a weird thing you just read it over read it again sometimes if it's a really complicated scene I'll put the other person on a dictaphone on my phone and leave space for my lines if it's a really complicated scene so that's my probably my trick that's actually yeah, a really some good tip that, yeah. they? some people do record the record them and then play them back in the car when they're driving around and stuff like that I don't I really read them the old-fashioned way and but as we have so many scenes and so many episodes I always um I'm always looking at the scene before and the scene afterwards um obviously so I can place the scene so by the time we're getting we uh, the first day is always a bit chaotic because you you need to make sure you know where your character is but as we get through the filming block I've kind of started to learn everything just by because I'm going referencing all the material across the, the filming block. So it gets, it gets a bit easier. Sometimes you just get scenes that you just cannot learn. Um, and then you, I don't know, it's, it, I don't know, sometimes the scenes are just disjointed and sometimes they go in really easily because whatever the other character says to you invokes the, the, a response that seems logical. And sometimes they're just not written like that. And that's, that's sometimes you can struggle. But I can never put my finger on why some scenes are harder to learn than others. What about pronunciation? While while I was living in in England, I I came across a couple of times pronunciation and the importance of RP and different accents. You're from Southern England. You're from Manchester. Um, mm -hmm. Emmerdale is based on somewhere in the little village. No. Northern no. Northern England. Um, do you do you guys have like some kind of requirements of pronunciation? Does it need to be RP or do you use your own accent? We use our own accent. I think years ago, I mean, Yorkshire villages nowadays, I think we're a mixture of, you know, accents generally. It's not as where before I think, I don't know. What, what do you think, Chris? Do you think maybe years and years ago, it really was just Northern Yorkshire people in a, in, a, in, a, in a village like Emmerdale, but I think now you can, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty mixed really, isn't it? It is mixed and there's, there's a whole range of accents on the show and um, it's kind of 
general northern accent, I suppose. But I'm from Manchester, so I'm from the other side of the Pennines, which is the other side of the mountains. And Mancunians sound very different to Yorkshire people if you if you know the British accent. So I'm just always mindful not to sound too Mancunian when I'm <laughs> when I'm on set. And I don't change my accent a lot, but I'm just mindful that um, that some certain words that I need to just adapt slightly so that I, I fit fit in slightly better to the village. Yeah, I think that's the one. Uh, my mother tongue is actually Swedish, so we speak two languages in, in Finland. So I, actually, Swedish is my mother tongue, and I can like in the beginning when we were doing scenes, if my character was getting upset or really really happy, you could hear it. So then she started, you know, you could, there was a bit of a, a, a swinglish there, <laughs> uh, but then I just adapted it to the character, and I think that's in the sense also fine that you can they can have these backgrounds and stories, so it doesn't always have to be so strict and polished in in a sense i think that brings a good roughness and the same thing is, is for your character yeah You're definitely not... my 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 dialect is it's it's like uh, liverpool accent in the uk uh, yeah yeah it's very noticeable yeah. and and i need to be mindful as well but yeah when my character gets upset all of a sudden there is my my dialect there it's like, yeah, crazy. <laughs> it's neat. Like, Actually, when I, first started on... <laughs> I was going to say, when I first started on the show, I had a brother in the show and he was, his character was called Nikhil. But the actor, Rick, he was, he was from South York, Yorkshire, where the, where the two brothers were supposed to be come from, where they were supposed to come from. So his accent was already authentic. So when I first started on the show, I was very mindful that I needed to, to mimic his accent so that we sounded like brothers and we didn't sound completely different. And I think maybe I've just, I don't know if I've just kept it or now he's not in the show anymore. It's, it's not quite as noticeable um, if we're, because I'm not playing a scene with him. So it's not noticeable that my accent <laughs> might not be exactly where it should be. A uh, question regarding how do you guys uh, combine uh family life and, and, and acting is it, what are your work hours like I, I think we have pretty Axel is just a newly become father so they yeah. have a little baby at home and he's trying to learn how to sleep with a <laughs> child in the house yeah, I have two kids on my own <laughs> it's challenge uh, is that something that you feel has, has gone smoothly well I, I've had um, three children while I've been in this show so um it's kind of been a gradual thing for me I think if I started this job and had three children then that would have been like oh my god but because I've done it sort of gradually I've sort of you know built up a kind of resistance <laughs> or, or, or uh, not resistance resilience I mean um, so you know I, I, I'm I'm but at the same time the show I think when I years ago we used to work a lot more as in the schedule used to be all over the place. So you used to be in more or less every day or at least four days. So now the schedule, the way it is, is, is that you actually do have more days off, but fuller days sometimes. So actually that works quite well with children. So you do have more days off. So I think as, as, as jobs go, actually, it's not bad. I think it'd be harder working in a bank nine to five every day, you know, so we do get the afternoons or the mornings off or days. So yeah, and one of the reasons I love working on the soap actually is because of the kids, because it makes my life a lot easier in some ways, because I, I'm always coming to work at the same place. I don't live where the show was filmed. I live in Manchester, so I'm an hour and a bit away from the studio or an hour and a half from the, from the location. But just to be able to work as an actor regularly but also because it's such a big operation, you get your schedules in advance, so you know roughly where you're going to be. And I can always get home to the kids and I can kind of tell them, I can prepare them if I'm going to be away from home for a few days, but I can always get back. It, it works well with kids, although it, it has been challenging. In fact, I think the only time that I've ever been late for work was after my daughter Ella was born. And I was delirious. I'd had no sleep. And I, <laughs> I came to stay in Leeds for the, for the night after my first day back at work. And it was in the winter. It was dark. And I slept through my alarms because I hadn't had any sleep for days. And then I got in my car and I drove to the location that I'd been going to, the village, for the past, I don't know, five, six years, maybe even longer. 
and I got lost on my way to work. <laughs> so that's the good. That, I was that tired after the birth of Ella that I actually got lost going to the place that I've, I know so well. Oh, wow. <laughs> But it's exactly that what what you child mentioned earlier. It was the the um, as an actor, you kind of like you you adjust, you do a little bit of waitering or things and that and things and that. You go around places, but when you do soap and you have a family, it's just so much easier. And it's kind of like it's all combined. You can do what you love, but you can still be a family man or woman or. Mm -hmm person it's 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 a blessing and and mm -hmm. it's just it really when, I, when I graduated I working here, yeah I was gonna say it's a blessing because if I wasn't if I wasn't working here I might I don't know what I'd be doing you know I could be shooting a film in Romania for three months and I wouldn't see the kids you know but this, exactly you know that's why I was saying it's so it's so perfect for for having a family life and also being able to do what you love to do you know to be an actor yeah yeah, soon there's going to be a lot of uh, act actors and actresses who have a lot of children applying to all of the soap operas around the world. <laughs> Find out it's the best combination. Yeah, yeah, definitely, exactly. <laughs> I definitely uh, agree. It's we have the pretty much the same system as that. Yeah. Uh, the, it's really well scheduled and and the the it's it's like it functions and you can trust the schedule and the planning and and then you know what's happening. It's much easier than there's just a flimsy like you might be away a couple of days, you might be away a week. So so I mean everything with kids the planning is key. So so this does give a bit of a chance. So I'm really happy to hear that you have the great experience as well. So let's give a big woohoo to the soap series. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what's the best thing that have ever happened to your character or the craziest thing or the most memorable scene you've done you've been in the series for for quite some time so it's it's interesting to hear what kind of things have happened yeah bloopers are also allowed like really embarrassing scenes that did not go as planned but just okay. to mention that there is a scene that caused a, a lot of rumors around the UK that happened between you guys, I think. It hasn't aired in Finland yet, so... Oh, okay, yes, mindful, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So this is a disclosure. Finland is, is very much behind in what you guys have yeah. been, been shooting there, yeah. So, yeah. so that's, that's uh, the topic. But yeah, what, what would be the most memorable scene? It can be like a big scene from an acting point of view or then like a, a dramatic blooper. It's a hard Nola? one. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've done some wonderful stuff. Um, the, we did um, a live episode of Emmerdale for the 40th anniversary. And well, wait, that what, how does that happen? Something. What is alive? It doesn't we, mean that you have like public people watching it when you're no, filming or is it, is it? Yeah, it was broadcast live. So we had, um, it was mainly played in the Emmerdale village and there were various locations. Um, so we rehearsed it like a play. So wow. that we just, we cut to the scene. I was in a, a wedding environment up in a big marquee. Um, and that was, that was quite hairy because I had a lot of, um, a lot of the cues for the scenes came to me. So I was the first person to speak on our set. Um, and that was, I mean, that was exhilarating and also completely nerve wracking. Um, wow. And I remember, yeah, it was, it, and things go wrong as well. One of the actors' phones was was doing the voice command thing during the oh. scene, it didn't go out. Oh. Um, and I remember people saying to us that, um, that we weren't really doing it live. And the truth was, we had actually recorded the um, the dress rehearsal in case something catastrophic happened mm. whilst the, we were doing the live episode, and they could play that tape in to to cover it, in, just in case something went wrong. And it didn't happen. But I always remember people questioning whether we were actually doing it live. And because I had one of the opening cues, it was a night when England were playing football, and I just so I just decided to to get the football score. <laughs> um, and then as they came to me, I just put an ad lib in with the with the football score just to prove that it was actually live because I could not possibly know the England score at wow. that stage. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds really cool and also very nerve wracking. 
I was actually mm. shaking before because I knew I was going to do the ad lib and I was checking to see what the score was and I was thinking, I oh, don't get this wrong, don't get this wrong. Yeah. Didn't you, they, uh, another, another soap of ours, um, uh, EastEnders, they did a live and uh, there's a famous scene where the, the character Ian Beale, who's a he's been in it forever, oh no, it's, it's the person he's opposite, he's playing opposite him, um, and this girl says, asks him a question and it's live and she actually says his name not his character's name it was wow. Joe Joy wasn't it Joe John and she actually says uh, Adam and it's like that moment of oh my god I've just called him his real name you know th these things happen all I yeah, mean lives yeah. are awful lives are awful I mean yeah, let's it's not just do that terrible oh. idea. <laughs> yeah have you not done that out there you, you wait no, it'll be no, coming i hope they don't pick it up uh, pick up on the idea right now but of, of course i mean it would be exciting but yeah. really scary uh we have it. It. Uh, yeah well <laughs> i love theater i, I love live it uh, kind of like gets your adrenaline adrenaline up and yeah. it has that feeling yeah i i prefer practicing before we do um, yeah yeah, yeah i'm fine yeah, with you yeah, yeah uh i think we're going to start actually wrapping up uh, a massive uh, thank you for you guys and uh, we have iris here who's gonna ask a couple of questions i think soon uh oh yeah no we do have actually one thing are you up for a little bit of a challenge oh god what yeah. would you like to speak finnish and no pressure, Finnish is just like the second hardest language in the world to learn. So if you don't <laughs> do so, uh, it's totally okay. Um, what what would our line be today? Would it be, do you have, you, you have some plans there? Okay, uh, okay so, yeah. yeah. Hei kaikki salkkareiden ja emmerdeilen fanit. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna make it easier for you. We can go. Hey, Kai. There's no. Hey, Kai. Ki? Yes. Hey, Kai. Ki? Yes. Uh, Salkareiden ja Emmerdalen. Oh, I mean that's impossible. Salkareiden. <laughs> I even break it down into phonetics. I know that is impossible. <laughs> Let's make it a bit easier. Let's oh, say yeah. hello, all the fans. All right. Okay. Yeah. Hey. Kaikki fanit. Hey, hey, guys, give fun it. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> wow! Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Amazing. Full points for the finish. It was really great meeting you. I think Axel, you're gonna. Yeah, I'm us. gonna give space for MTV news reporter Iris. Yes. Just a moment. And I'm gonna hey, keep her yes. company. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So hi guys. Hi. Nice to meet you. Hi. Uh, my name is Iris Silander and I am a journalist and I'm actually going to make a story about this meeting to our news. Uh, I have my cameraman here with me. So how was it? How was it for you guys to meet them? Oh, no, it's great. I mean, we, we have a huge amount of respect for you, for you guys out there in Finland because I know the show is so, so popular. And when we have what we do fan club weekends um, over here, and we always have like some really amazing Finnish fans who come over every single year. And they and they always sit down and, and say to me, or well, all of us, you know, we can't tell you how big your show is over in Finland. So, you know, it's so nice to be supported by you guys. So nice to meet you as well. So you have it's met nice a lot of, you. sorry. I was just saying, it's nice to meet some actors that are doing doing the same job as us and yeah. um, being seen by them. It's nice. And you have already met a lot of Finnish fans because the show is so big here in Finland. Uh, have you received any messages from the, them uh, from social media? I don't really do social media. <laughs> so I'm a rubbish person to ask. I don't, well, um, yeah, I don't really, so I don't. No, but Chris, you probably are better than person to ask I've, me. I've been really bad on social me media recently, but um, one thing I did notice when I first started in the show that I got a lot of mail from yeah, Finland. good old fashioned and, um, mail. I was I was sending a lot of um, uh, signed cast cards, but out to Finland and and trying to work out what the addresses were because <laughs> yeah. we do it all ourselves. Of course, we don't we don't have staff to um, to do our posts for them. But have you ever been in Finland? I have. I've been to Helsinki. Oh, wow. Um, I did a film um, called East is East. And 
when we were premiering, I went to the premiere in Helsinki. So I had a night, um, in fact, I've been to Helsinki twice. I, did, I, went, I was doing some presenting there as well. In the summer, when there's, when there's, when there's no darkness, Oh yeah. Bed. yeah. <laughs> it was just like we came out of the pub at what we thought was night and it was broad daylight and really sunny and it was I had to go back to my hotel and try and close all the curtains and black it out so I could go to sleep. How weird. It was a uh, yeah, very unusual experience. What about you, Charlotte? When are we going to meet you here? No, oh, I know. I'd love to come. I'd love to come. Uh no, I haven't um I haven't been, but in fact, I did a storyline where we pretended, me and Ashley went to Helsinki, we went to the airport, but of course we filmed it in Bradford Airport, so, um, but uh, I was like, oh, can we not fly over there? And they were like, no, but yeah, I'd love to go, I'd love to go. And actually, that storyline is really viral in YouTube. Uh, people have been watching that, uh, that you are speaking actually finished in there. Can oh you yeah, I do, that? don't I? Yeah, yeah, and I've forgotten how what I said, but I obviously said it quite well. <laughs> I think I practiced it. You said, yeah, I yeah, love yeah. you. Yeah, I can't remember what that is now. <laughs> but yeah, I did, I did. Oh God, that was nearly 15 years ago. It's got to be. But now it's Maybe. viral in YouTube and people are watching that a lot. <laughs> how funny, gosh. So I think we are ready, and it was really nice to meet you guys. Do you want to come here? No, yeah. <laughs> he's gonna do Hello. it. <laughs> Thank you so yeah, much. Thanks, oh, pleasure, pleasure. Thank you. Lovely to talk to you. Lovely Have to a great talk to you. Week and keep yeah. on doing the great job. Finnish fans oh, are really, really, really happy. Nyt päästä kohtaamaan teidän kollegoita, niin mikä yllätti eniten heidän tavassaan tehdä sitä työtä? No ehkä se yllätti tietyllä tavalla, että kun niin niitäkin on niin paljon siellä, niin mä olin olettanut, että ehkä se sama kuin, kuin Jenkeissä ne kuva vissiin vähän tiuhempaan tahtiin, mm. että niillä on varmaan enemmän niin kuin, studiohenkilökuntaa tietyllä tavalla, mutta niillä tuntuu olevan se niin kuin arki aika samanlaista kuin meillä. Nyt on tavattu Kaunarit-tähdet, Emmerdale-tähdet, niin mikä on sitten se seuraava goal? Olisiko hmm. sitten Australia? Australia. Oh, home and away. Home and away, niin sit saadaan valvoa oikein. Joo. Hei sitä kohti. Hei sitä kohti. Cheers.